Um, after you've turned on the battery and after you set up the battery, then I would turn on the inverter and wait a couple of minutes until all the devices are on. So once you've turned on the inverter and um, the battery, then we can begin to commission the inverter using the PV master app. So the PV master app can be used for all the hybrid inverters. So that's the single phase low voltage and the three phase high voltage hybrid inverters and the battery inverters as well. So one, one app to do all the commissioning of all the hybrid inverters. So what I do recommend is to turn on the PV array DC isolator so that the inverter turns on. I would leave uh, the AC isolator in the off position just for the moment. Um, then to connect to the inverter, I would find the Wi-Fi access point solar Wi-Fi XXXXX. And the last six numbers here is the last six numbers of the serial number of that inverter. So you can find the last six numbers of the serial um, of the serial number on the right hand side of the inverter on the nameplate rating label. Um, so that allows you to ensure that you're connecting to the correct inverter. So once you've connected to the solar Wi-Fi, um, then enter the password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then what, maybe up to about 30 seconds, um, it should, the device should connect to the inverter by Wi-Fi. And then you can open your PV master app and select the inverter that it's connected to. And then it will then download um, the information from the inverter and it will show you real time what is actually happening, happening on the system as well. So from the PV master app, it will give you an energy flow diagram of what's happening, um, of the amount of power that's going through the system. And it will give you some high level information of the status of the inverter. So once you've opened the PV master app, select the set button or the icon or click on that using your finger or your stylus pen to begin the basic settings. And if you ask for a password to enter the basic settings, the password is Goodwee2010. One tip that I would give you for people that are using Android phones, I would turn the Android phone onto flight mode and then turn the Wi-Fi only on. Um, because there are Android phones which have some kind of smart connect feature. And if the phone detects that there is no internet connection, then it'll disconnect automatically from that access point. So to avoid this happening, um, when you're connecting to our inverter, I would again, turn on the, uh, put the phone on flight mode and then turn Wi-Fi on to ensure that the phone does not disconnect from the inverter while you're going through the setup. So it's a very simple commissioning procedure. Uh, essentially just select the, the country safety code. So if you're in the Netherlands, select Netherlands. If you're in Belgium, you select Belgium. Um, after that, then we will select the general or the work mode that you will require. So if you can remember from last time, 99% of the time, most people use the general mode, which um, increases your self-consumption of the system. Um, and then we will go on to the battery selection mod um, screen, which will then allow you to select the correct battery. So if you've connected a HVM battery, then select HVM. If you've connected a HVS, then select HVS and then click next. Um, the next step is a CT meter test. And this can be skipped and done at a later stage, but if you would like to go through the test right there and then, which is what I would recommend you to do, then this is the time when you would turn on the AC isolator because the CT meter test needs a connection to the grid to ensure that um, it can test the phases of each CT that's connected to correctly. So I would turn on the AC isolator and I would turn on some, some uh, loads as well. So I would turn on the stove while this, CT, while this CT meter test is running. So wait until the grid LED is solid on the, LED, on, the, um, on the front side of the inverter. So when this is solid, that means the inverter is connected to the grid and then begin the CT meter test. So after you've done, the CT meter test can take up to five minutes. So after it's completed, then it will ask you to reset the inverter, but it, the PV master app will reset and restart the, the inverter automatically after you've confirmed.
So after you have completed uh, the CT meter test and the inverter is uh, restarted, what you will see is that the, if the inverter is connected to the grid, it will show you a normal normal status on the on the um, on the display. It will show you which grid code has been selected. It will show you the battery model that it's connected to. It will tell you the work mode that you selected. Um, it will tell you whether the CT meter test has been um, performed uh, successfully or not, or unsuccessfully. And it will also tell you uh, the BMS status. So if it's normal, that means that the inverter can or is connected to the BMU and it is getting the information from the BMU. If there is um, if there is a problem with the connection between the battery and the inverter, usually what will happen is that the B, the BYD battery will disconnect itself after five to ten minutes. So if the BYD battery shuts itself down, then you can assume that there is a connection problem between um, the inverter and the battery itself. So some advanced features that we have as well. So if you need to activate export control, so if you have zero export or if you can only export one kilowatt of power, you can go into the advanced menu and enable the export power limit and then set the power limit in terms of watts. So if it's a 1000 watt limit, then type in one, one kilowatt limit then type in 1000. If you have a zero export, um, if you have to, if you're not allowed to export any power, so it's zero export, then um, enter zero and then click on set. And then you, then you essentially, you have set up the export power. In terms of the backup function, if you have connected some backup loads, um, again, move, go into the advanced setting and then turn on the backup supply and then also activate the off-grid output switch. So. What will happen is that by turning on the backup supply, this will ensure that there is voltage on the backup output of the inverter. So that means under a normal grid condition, the backup loads that are connected to the backup port will be powered during on-grid mode. And then by activating the off-grid output switch, this means that when there is a grid failure, the inverter will still continue to supply power to the off-grid, uh, to, to the backup loads. And then once the grid comes back on, the inverter will resynchronize to the grid and then we'll be able to then supply power to the on-grid loads. Um, we also have a feature, it's, we call it a three unbalanced three-phase output feature, but this is mostly um, relevant for the Czech Republic because in the Czech Republic, they do have a strict, um, uh, a true zero export a rule, which means that they are not allowed to export any current on any of the phases. So by activating this feature on the ET inverter or the BT inverter, that ensures that the inverter regulates each phase um, individually to ensure that there is no current going back into the grid on any of the phases. So once you've um, set up the inverter, then you can set up the internet or the inverter itself. Every inverter has does have a Wi-Fi module um, connected to it. You can replace it with a LAN module, which um, which you will need to purchase from your distributors, such as Nartec. Um, so be ensure that you're within five meters of the inverter. Um, connect again to the Wi-Fi of the inverter itself using your your smartphone. Um, select the solar Wi-Fi. Um, and then enter the password, which you already know. What you can use is you can use the SEMS app, which you can also download. And then you do not need to log into the SEMS portal. What you can do is just select Wi-Fi configuration and then follow the steps. And then by following the steps, it will then um, allow you to select the customer's router from the dropdown list and then enter the password. And then once it's connected, it will successfully um, give you a prompt on the screen and observe the LEDs or the Wi-Fi LEDs on the front of the inverter itself. So um, another way to connect the inverter to the internet is via using the browser. So you can use your browser, your web browser of your PC or the web browser of your mobile phone. So a, 
I've spoken to a lot of installers um, and they do typically use their mobile phone with the browser. So um, this is, they, according to a lot of installers, this is more stable than using the Samsung app. Um, so again, you still need to connect your device to the Wi-Fi access point of the inverter, but rather using um, the SEMS app, they open the web browser app and then you can enter the web server page of the inverter, which is 10.10.100.253. And then you can enter the password and uh, the admin login and the password, which is admin admin. And then you will enter the um, web server page of the inverter. And we have a like a smart like a wizard setup wizard which will allow you to select the customer's router and then enter the password and then um, successfully connect to the customer's router. So we do recommend that you observe the LEDs of the inverter um, for the Wi-Fi connection. We do have a description on the left hand side of the inverter here. So if you see the Wi-Fi solid that means that the inverter is connected to the router and the router is connected to the server the sem servers that means that there is information going from the inverter to the internet um, to the sems portal that means everything is fine if you're seeing blinking once that means that you have most likely pressed the reset button on the front of the inverter if it's blinking twice then the wi-fi is not connected to the router so then you'll have to try and um, try and go through the process again, check the passwords, check that, that you've connected to the right access point. If it's blinking four times, this means that the inverter is connected to the router. However, there is a problem between the router and the, and the could we server. So there might be some kind of firewalls that have been set up by the end user itself. So in this case, I would recommend that you contact the service team to help you um, solve the problems.